It's actually pretty expensive to be poor. The average American household today spends almost 10% of their income on things like interest and fees for alternative financial services. And just for context, that's about as much as what they spend on food and groceries. There's a big opportunity to improve the, the well-being of lives by uh, giving them the, the opportunity to use digital commerce. There are two billion people in the world that are what we would describe as underserved financially. The unique aspect of those two billion people is that roughly 60 to 70 percent of them have a mobile phone. And with a mobile phone, you can put all of the power of a, of a bank branch in the palm of their hands. In Mexico today, many people receive international money remittances. The process of doing that through the traditional means entails going and waiting in line, going to and from the physical location, and that can take as long as 45 minutes. If you look at that over the course of someone's lives, that's 15 days that they're spending either going to a place to receive their money or, or going back home or waiting in line. With digital banking, they can do that in a matter of, of minutes at roughly half the cost of traditional measures. In the world today, one billion people still pay their utility bills with cash which if you think about how cumbersome that can be, you've got to carry around cash, you've got to give change. It's a process that is easily improved with a mobile device and paying things online. It's also an opportunity to improve the security of whatever cash or money that you'd be holding. Roughly half the adult population in Kenya has made a person-to-person -person payment, either sent or received money through a, a mobile phone, a digital device. And they're not having to go around and carry cash and risk maybe theft or other things like that. If you think about traditional banking, being one where you would have to have a physical branch pop up in a location for someone to go to transact. What digital commerce and what digital banking has done is, is basically eliminate that need. And so this gives them on-ramps into the digital economy. If you don't have a traditional bank account or a credit or debit card, you're largely excluded from shopping online. And this is a way that lets them participate in the digital economy that they wouldn't otherwise be able to.